Travelling in a classic car is a huge adventure. Who knows if it's going to make it? They need constant care and attention, especially when you're off the beaten track or parked in a metre of water. How do you get back on the road again? We've asked Land Rover Guru Rob to shine a light on the subject and help us understand the technical side of maintenance and repair. Is this a problem, this curly stuff? Is this a problem, this curly stuff? <laughs> Um. Right, good morning everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Here we are, taking the front wheels off a Land Rover. You might think why. There's a good reason for this. Yep, it's definitely got a wobble. Oh god, this is free London. We're having a race each side. <laughs> Who's quicker? Oh, you right. Me against the expert. Vic's a little bit behind. About four bolts worth. <laughs> and we're off. Yay. Two minutes later. <laughs> it's not a race. What we're going to do is take the whole of the hub assembly. So, this is the hub assembly. And take the hub assembly off. Okay. So we take the brake caliper off and we hang that to one side so we don't disconnect the brake lines. So we're not interfering with the brake fluid. We don't have to bleed the brakes. Oh, you good. Okay. And we'll take the brake disc off. There, <laughs> yes. there you go. Okay. That's off. And then we strip the stub axle off. There it comes. Cool. Okay, so all of this is now gone. We have the stub axle. <laughs> we have the swivel housing. Cool. You can take it over if, if, if it comes off it. There you go. And then we will take the swivel itself off. That. So now just, yeah, that's it. And we're going to replace the swivel because A, we have some wear in the bearings and the pin, and B, we have corrosion and pitting on the ball, which is wearing away at the seal. So we're going to replace all of that assembly and do the same operation on the opposite side. So. We're going to use the basic tools that you have at home, or should have at home, but there are a couple of tools that you will either have to beg, steal or borrow. Um, firstly, to remove the brake caliper. Then, the bolts that hold the caliper onto uh, the hub assembly is uh, a half inch or 13 mil bolt. And most people will have a six-sided socket to do that. However, the bolts that hold the caliper on are 12 sided. So you need to have a 12 point socket to remove that. Okay? And that's these bolts that are in That's these bolts that are in here. So it's this one here. Okay? And there's one below there. Okay? So, <clears throat> the other thing that we're going to need to do is release the ball joint from the swivel housing. Now, you can tap the end of the swivel housing with a hammer and the ball joint should come out. It's an interference fit once you've undone the nut and the, uh, the split pin at the bottom. Okay? But, Another useful little tool to have, and you quite often replace these, is a ball joint splitter. Uh, this is the typical home one. And basically what happens is that as you turn the nut, that moves the pivot upwards. This is holding the ball, and it will pop it off. So that's the typical one for home use. This is the one, the professional use one. Okay. But it works the same way. Basically, it sits on there and you wind the bolt. Makes life a lot easier. So, for taking the hub assembly off, in behind the dry flange here, there is a nut. Uh, it's a 52 millimeter nut, and you need to have a hub nut spanner. These are readily available, most of the, the Land Rover suppliers will sell them. They're not very expensive and a bar goes through the side of it and 
you can take the nut off. Uh, we modified ours slightly. We have a, a, a large socket in with a half mil socket. Just makes life a little bit easier. So, and it's a very simple modification you can do at home. Or as long as you've got a welder. Um, another little piece of kit for when we finally come to setting everything up. There has to be a certain amount of resistance on the swivel uh, and that's controlled by a set of shims up the top here and you need a spring balance to work out what that resistance is. Um, a spring balance. Over here you find them at the fishing shop, which was a revelation to me, but basically as you pull it shows how much effort is required in pounds or kilograms and we'll get to that later on. Other than that, that's about it. So we're ready to start. Great two stuff. bolts that hold the caliper on. All right, these two. This? Yeah, all right. And we're going to undo this so that yeah. we can get the, yeah. the bracket off. Yeah. Yeah, it up and down. And you're going down, yeah? down yes, anti-clockwise. Loose. Great, now I'm going to sing that song the whole day. Getting to know you. Because the caliper is now loose. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But as you can see, this brake pipe yeah. holds yeah. it to there. Now we could detach the brake pipe from the flexible hose, yeah. okay, then but then we'd have to re bleed the, re re the brakes, okay. So now we can undo those two. Okay. Okay. Um, but we're going to have to put the bolts back in. Okay. Because otherwise we've already started to undo the whole of the swivel housing. Okay. okay so it's just so to take, take the plate out. Just to take the plate out for the okay. moment. Yeah. Okay. Right. Now I can lift this. Yes. And this. Yeah. You got it? Yeah, you got it. Okay. Okay. Put the tie wrap mm -hmm. through here. Okay. So the tie wrap doesn't look strong enough. Yeah, it will be. All I want is somewhere here. Well, we we'll just put back in there for a moment. Just to keep it tight. Okay. Cool. That's okay. just keeping Step the pin five. in. That's just keeps the that's that's literally just to keep the pin in. Yeah. Okay. Is it still mud from uh, Germany? I think. We can un we take the cap off. Mm -hmm. We take the circlip off, and then we can take the dry flange off. Then we can take the whole of the brake disc and hub assembly off in one. Yeah. Right yeah. Just lever it off. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh -huh. There you are. So. Okay. And then here there is a. Circlip. Yeah. How do you see. get those out with pliers? With circlip pliers. Uh -huh. so. <laughs> Keep you entertained all afternoon, isn't it? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> it feels so weird. You're doing the opposite of what you normally do. And there are also a couple of little metal shims in behind. What are they for? Um, it's basically for the spacing for movement on the axle. All right. How do I stop this? <laughs> okay. You put a screwdriver in. Yeah. Turn. Okay. Do it up. Yeah. You go. Must go up, right? Yeah. You go up. I hold it. Uh -huh. There. Okay. And the other one. You can do them all. And once you've got them undone. Okay. And do it like that. If you're on this side of it. And left handed. Okay. Just a bit at a time. Yeah, come. That's the one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, this is the drive flange. So, the axle mm -hmm. is driven, mm -hmm. and these splines marry up with these ones, mm -hmm. and that turns this. This in turn then turns the whole of the hub assembly. Okay. Okay. So this is the bit that drives the wheels. 
So without that, the wheels don't turn. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And in behind them here, there, now you're starting to feel that there is a yeah. nut. Yeah. Yeah. You have the nut, and on Land Rovers up to 1999, okay, um, there are two 52 millimeters nuts. There's one here. There's a, a locking tab which you have to push back mm -hmm. and then behind that there is another one okay and this is used to control the end float on the bearing because you've got two um, taper bearings and by setting that to the correct tightness then you set the correct load on the bearing okay um, after 1999 so TD5 onwards then there is a single nut and there is a spacer that sits in the middle about there, mm -hmm. that uh, using different sized spacers gives you the correct setting for the bearing. Okay. So. I can just see the one up here. So, so first of all, we've got to knock yeah. back this oh. locking tab. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't smell as bad as before. There. Oh, I always need to push it up. Yeah, there. push it up. Okay. Oh, it's near the hammer. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. It's going flat. Yeah. 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 Could you tap that loose with a screwdriver and a hammer? You can tap it loose with a screwdriver and a hammer as well, if you don't have the hub nut spanner. Not exactly the correct way to do it. No, but that comes in here. Yeah, that goes in there. Yeah. Now you need to take the locking tab off, yeah. okay, so we can prise that off. Okay. Don't bend the screwdriver. Yeah, you don't bend the screwdriver. No, uh, we bend quite nice. a few. <laughs> okay. Now you can undo this one, all right? Now. One there. Okay. Yeah. There's another ring in behind, but that will come off with the rest of the hub. Okay. So what you're going to do is pull it forward. So okay. you're going to pull all of this, because this now will just come off. So if you give it a good tug. There, there you go. Okay. That's off. What we have is <clears throat> we have a, a spacer ring, we've got a bearing, and at the back, so this is the hub assembly, we have the brake disc, Mm -hmm. We have the rear hub oil seal and we've got the inner bearing. So you have an inner bearing and an outer bearing. And they run around the stub axle. But we, start, we still can't get the axle out because mm -hmm. inside the ball, mm -hmm. as I said earlier when we were looking at the parts, inside the ball is a constant velocity joint. Mm -hmm. So we have to take the stub axle off. Okay. Okay. And then we can. So, so these are the bolts that hold the stub axle on. Okay. So we take that off, then we can withdraw the whole of the axle, okay. then we can undo the top and bottom pins and take the swivel housing off, okay. and then we can take the swivel itself off. Okay. Okay? <laughs> and again the idea is to just slacken them off with the bar, yeah. make life easier, and then use the ratchet to wind the bolts out. And now you can take the stub axle off. The stub axle. That, that's yeah, that's the whole of that. Where'd you grab it? <laughs> okay, right. It's it will be held on. Somebody has somebody's used kit. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. We may have to use a bigger one. Just watch your hands, please. Mm -hmm. There it comes. Cool. So you can take that off. Yeah. Okay. So that's yeah. the stuff I off. Okay. Yes. So, yeah. And you can take the hole yeah. of the axle out now. Parental. So it's going to be about that long. Is that going to. Uh, no, 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 Yay. You can stick that on the cardboard. Yay. 
The card boy. Yep. You're dripping everywhere. There you go. So that there is your constant velocity joint on the end. And that basically allows the axle to turn and for the hub with the wheel on it to move in any direction, keeping the power take the pin out, take the pin mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And then we have to undo no. this nut, okay? And then we'll put the ball joint splitter on. Okay, and then pop it and out. And pop it out. Cool. Yeah? Give it a bit of a wiggle and it will pull out. Yeah! Do that moves first without the ball moving. Okay. And normally that'll take a little uh, a bit of persuasion with it. Yeah, okay. Right. So, yeah, I'd say I want to make sure that the ball doesn't move. Sometimes the ball will go with that. And you're just turning and turning and turning. Oh, this ball? No. This ball, that, that. The, the ball inside there. Oh, the ball okay. Joint. All right. All so, right. so turn it with a spanner and you can see whether the bolt, whether the nut turns in relation to the pin. This? Yeah. Okay. Or whether they both turn. Okay. okay. So, so we go that way and you can see that the nut itself is turning free. Okay. And then actually you can wind it off okay. your finger. So, there is a washer underneath. Yeah. So, you put that together. with the pin to have the ball go there. Mm -hmm. What you can do, if you don't, is with a hammer, you need to hit it about there. You don't hit the ball joint at all, only the, mm -hmm. on the housing. The housing will take the thing. Basically, you create a shock wave that goes through, mm -hmm. and because that is uh, a conical taper mm -hmm. fit, it will release. It will pop it out. Yeah. Okay, so you would go. Shall I demonstrate? Mm -hmm. Um, do you want to stand to the other side of me, Victoria? Mm -hmm. Just because I'm going to swing. Sure. <laughs> so. And it's out. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Can okay. you the extension? Yeah, you can do it with the extension. Then you get your hands covered. Okay. You need to hold it the other side first. You need to hold the other side as well. Yeah. Okay. Yes? And we have to take the backing disc off. Yours is yeah. not very good anymore. But we have to take the backing disc off so we've got access to the bolts for the bottom pin. And then there is one. On the side. One here, on this side, here, that holds it on there. Okay? Okay, that's a big one. Yeah. one here adjusts how far the steering will turn for each of the wheels okay. to stop the wheels from rubbing on the hooky stick. Okay. Is that the towing, is it? No. Yeah. This is the cutest thing I've seen. Spanners are cute. This one is really cute. Yeah. You can take it if, if, if yeah. it comes off it. There you go. Perfect. That. Okay. And that's the bearing in the top. Yeah. Okay. That's the top bearing. All of the other parts. Is that the wearing? So is that the play? It's broken. <laughs> Look. You're missing mm. something, Victoria. Gee whiz. You're missing a roller. And would that cause the... Uh... <laughs> yeah, that yeah. would definitely cause... Yeah, because this, this is what... Okay, this, you've got a bearing here, mm -hmm. okay, which yeah. sits in the swivel. 
you've got a bearing in the top. Okay. All right. And the whole of this pivots yeah. around that. Okay. okay. All right. And you have now you've got if I, okay. I don't know, can you can you see that? You have a huge, huge amount of movement yeah. because there's a roller missing. from the bearing that's missing totally. You've got to ask yourself where it's gone to. <laughs> well, it's either in there the or um, the bottom bearing, which is intact. Just a little bit of reasonable bit of play on it, but as I say, not as much as the, the top bearing. Mm. So. That's the bottom of the swivel pin, which is okay. You have here uh, HRC 2375. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. okay. That to start them off, okay. each of them. Yeah? Okay. okay. <clears throat> it's nice to putting it back together again because everything's clean. Right? Alright, so. How do you get it off? Yeah, I'm okay. stuck here. If you push the spanner towards the end of the flange, oh, yeah, okay, okay. Like that. undo the bolt with your um, fingers, undo. and take the bolt and the spanner off at the same time. Oh, right. See? <laughs> Works perfectly. Cool. Can't okay, put the end of that. And now it just, yeah, that's it. it yeah. Just comes straight out. That's a messy job. That one's me. This is the new one. Can you wiggle it? Wow. You can actually feel the difference between the two. Gee whiz. Yes. Now if that's one millimetre or so yeah. on the pin, now extend that to the height of your wheel. Wow. That's a huge difference. Yeah. So, so you start with one millimetre there, and now you're going to this height for your tyre. In your vehicle, you're probably moving it, I don't know, wow. probably a good inch or so That's in that sort of plane. But it moves, it doesn't just move that way, but it's moving that way and it's moving in all directions. The original ball that the uh, constant velocity joint sits in, okay, uh, it's a steel ball and then it has a layer of chrome on it. And over the years, you get little stone chips and they chip away the chrome and then you get rust mm. okay and the rust then gets underneath the chrome and the chrome starts to fall off and what actually happens then is that because you have the seal that goes over here as the wheel turns the rust moves against the seal and you wear the seal okay so and that basically is the, the biggest cause of a failure of a seal. Yeah, the swivel seals. That's okay. And that's when they start to leak. Okay. Now, <clears throat> in 1999, thereabouts, Land Rover changed the swivels um, and stopped chroming them. Okay. So, so there's no longer a chrome covering. And this is actually a Teflon coating. Mm. And that's why this one is black and that one is silver. Okay, so they do a Teflon coated. And the idea now is that, that basically you don't have the same problem with pitting and rusting. Mm. All right. I mean, that's we don't miss each other in the candlestick. Hold up the garden. It's a chalice. <laughs> it's a chalice.